This here is a piano accordion. To be more specific, it's a 12 bass piano accordion, which refers to the 12 buttons on the left side here. Piano accordions and accordions in general are usually referred to by the number of buttons on the left hand. Generally, more buttons means a larger instrument, whereas less buttons means a smaller instrument. This is about as small as they get, really. The 12 buttons produce six bass notes. And six major chords corresponding to those bass notes. But, I hear you ask, what do you do if you want to play a tune that doesn't just use major chords? Now, that's a bit of a problem, because while it works fine for tunes in a major key, it's not as good for tunes in a minor key. Simply because the major chord that you might be playing in your left hand and the minor melody that you're playing in your right hand just don't mix. Sounds horrible. So there are, a few, there are a few workarounds. You can fake the minor chords. You generally do that by playing the root note of the chord that you want. Say you want to play A minor, then you play the A bass. And you'd play the relative major chord, which kind of gives you a minor chord-ish. But it's not a true minor chord, because you've got the addition of the 7th there, which makes it a minor 7th and isn't ideal. Rather than playing... You're playing... The other workaround is something that's generally used with melodions, so uh, diatonic button accordions, rather than piano accordions. And that is to remove the thirds from the chords. Now, simple chords, major chords and minor chords, are triads, which means they have three notes. In a major chord, you have the first, the third, and the fifth. But in a minor chord, you flatten the third, which gives you that characteristic minor sound. But if you take out the third entirely, you end up with a neutral power chord. And that can work over both minor melodies and major melodies. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to take off the thirds from a 12 bass piano accordion. Now, removing the thirds is an incredibly simple operation, um, but I know taking apart an accordion, particularly if you own a 12 bass, you're likely to be a beginner accordionist, and taking apart one of these mechanically complex instruments with lots of little bits might seem a little bit daunting, but it's really, really very simple. For example, to convert this instrument to having thirdless chords, I will need one tool and one roll of tape, and that's it. So... Oh my god. I've forgotten the screw. Where's the screwdriver go? I lost my screwdriver on the way to the studio. I had to run back and get it. But I've got it now. These are the three tools that you're likely to need. We have a pair of pliers, a roll of tape. I like to use this paper tape stuff because I don't trust masking tape and normal sellotape not to leave a sticky residue on the wood. And a screwdriver.
The first thing you're going to want to do is to open the accordion up. Accordions are constructed in three parts. You have the bass section down here, you have the bellows, and you have the treble section. And they're all held together, usually by pins, but sometimes, like in this case, with screws. This was originally held together by pins, but the pins were all bent and rusty and horrible when I got it, so I replaced them with these lovely little brass screws, which work just as well. So, to take the bass section off the accordion, in this case, you're going to want to remove these screws. It's handy to remember where, where the screws came from, because in older instruments, if the fittings are original, then they're likely to be handmade or at least hand finished, and they might not be the same size, so it's best for them to go back in the holes that they came from. And you want to turn it over. Be careful because this side is now loose, so that's no longer attached to the base. And of course, be careful not to slip off the screw with the screwdriver if your instrument has screws and damage the celluloid or the paint on the case, because that would be a shame. Now, usually your accordion will have pins, and to remove the pins really isn't that much harder. You want a pair of pliers, and you want to grab a pair of pliers and pull the pin. See if it comes out. If it doesn't come out, maybe try wiggling it or twisting it a little bit. Eventually it should come out. Don't try and WD-40 it, because that is bad for the accordion. Most of the time they'll just come out no problem at all. A good tip is to sandwich something in between the metal of the pliers and the metal of the pin, because that way it will um, stop any, so it'll stop the pliers from denting the pin or damaging it in any way and make it less likely for it to scratch the case of the accordion. Now the bellows have been separated from the base, you just want to lift it up gently and there you go. That is what it looks like inside the base section of your accordion, or that's what it looks like inside the base section of mine. Yours might be a little bit different, but it's probably round about the same. You have two reed blocks, which have these little metal reeds on, similar to a harmonica, or a melodica, or a concertina, or a harmonium, or whatever. They're all, all free reed instruments, all in the same family. In this case, and in most other cases, you have one block for the bass reeds that play the bass buttons, and you have one block for the chord reeds that are played by the chord buttons. Now the reeds are usually, reed blocks are usually held in place with a little tab at the end. Sometimes it's a little L-shaped lever, and sometimes it will be a little bit stiff. So you might need a pair of pliers, again needing, pli again, needing pliers, to wiggle it out of place. In this case, it's nice and smooth, so I don't need to. But you just want to push it to the side, and then the other end of the reed block will be sandwiched in between the bottom of the base section and a little wooden block. So you want to lift up the end that you just released and then slide it out like that. You can then discard this section uh, because we won't be needing it until you put the instrument back together. You're now left with a reed block. It's kind of like a big harmonica, very like a big harmonica, uh, but it's important to not blow into it because accordion reeds are made of steel. Steel rusts when exposed to moisture and that makes the reeds go out of tune. Don't blow through it, only suck. And you are going to want to suck because you will find usually that the reeds are arranged in little triangles. You'll have sets of three holes. One, two, three, four, five, six. One for each button. And each of these holes has the first note, the third note, and the fifth note. And you're going to want to locate the third note and then take a little bit of your tape, tear it off, or cut it off, you might need scissors, and stick it over the hole. So to locate it, you want to find, find one of these single sets of chord reeds, and you can, you can actually help find them 
by pressing the relevant chord button and seeing which palettes open up. So in this case, we're looking at the end, very bottom end button, and we can see that it opens up that bottom end set of three reeds, which is this three here. And so I'm going to cover the other ones with my map. I'm going to cover the other ones with my hand and suck through those three holes, which produces the chord. And then I'm going to want to find each one you're going to, I'm going to want to suck through each one individually and find which one is the third. So I now know that this one here is the read for the third, and if I just suck through those two holes, you get a neutral chord. So I'm going to take my bit of tape and very simply tape over the hole like that. Make sure that there's no gaps for air to escape through. I'm just going to retape it so I can make sure there's no gaps. And you're done. And now you just need to do it for the other six chords. Now, you can use a tuner to help you, or a piano, or any other instrument that you know produces the right notes, if you need help locating which reed is the third. But I'm just doing it by ear, so... So now I have my reed block with the thirds taped off. So now you just need to do the reverse of what you've done before, which is to put the block back into the base, back into the base section, lock it in place. If you need to undo this little screw, to help move the lever, if you have the salt with a little little lever like this, then just remember to tighten the screw back up again, otherwise the block will fall out and it might damage the inside of the instrument. Then you want to reassemble the rest of the accordion. If you have one with pins, then just push the pins in gently with a, a flat surface, uh, such as the, the hinge section of your pliers. If, they, if, it's, if they're not going in easily, then you can give them a little bit of a tap, gentle tap, with a hammer or something like that, and they'll go back in. I'll go back in. But seeing as mine uses screws, I'm just going to pop those screws back in quickly. And there you have it. Your accordion now has thirdless chords, which can stand in for major or minor, which really, really increases what you can do with one of these little accordions. I'll give a little demonstration of how it now sounds and what different effects you can get with this modification. And yeah, hopefully you'll want to do this on one of your own boxes. I'd recommend it. So the chords do lose a little bit of their oomph through having the thirds taken out. But I think it's worth it for the variety that you can get with, a th with thirdless chords. So now, as well as playing major tunes, play minor tunes as well.
You can also get some fun effects by combining the chords, which is actually the reason why I took the thirds out of the chords on this instrument in the first place. For example, if you play two chord buttons directly next to each other, for example, the C chord and the G chord, you can get a suspended second, which is very cool and very expressive. And by playing the C chord with the chord on the other side, the F chord, you can get a suspended fourth. And with that you can do sort of, you know... Which I think, again, is uh, really worth the sacrifice of the thirds. So, yes. I hope you've enjoyed this little tutorial. I'm not very well versed in making long speaking teaching videos, as you can probably tell, uh, but I will probably make more because there's a lot to teach when it comes to these things. So yeah, I hope you found it useful and see you soon.